Merry Christmas, and welcome to St. Luke's Episcopal Church. We are so very happy that you've joined us on Christmas morning. I would love for you to participate fully, and so you can download the service liturgy, the leaflet, uh, simply by going to uh, the link on whatever device you are using, whatever platform you're using, and just follow along. We're so very glad you're here. Now let us begin our worship by singing together, O Come All Ye Faithful. Behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, for unto you is born a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. What shall his name be called? His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, 
the Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have caused this holy day to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. I have posted sentinels upon your walls, Jerusalem. All day, all night, they will endlessly cry. You who call on God's name, do not rest, and do not let God rest until the Almighty establishes Jerusalem and makes it renowned throughout the world. Yahweh swore this with a raised hand and a mighty arm. Never again will I give your grain to feed your enemies. Never again will foreigners drink your wine for which you have toiled. But its harvesters will eat it and praise Yahweh. And those who gather the grapes will drink the wine in the courts of my sanctuary. Pass through, pass through the gates. Prepare the way for the people. Repair, repair the roads. Remove the boulders, raise a banner for the nation. This is Yahweh's proclamation to the ends of the earth. Say this to Zion, your beloved. Look, your deliverer comes with a sure reward and abundant recompense. They shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of Yahweh. You yourself will be named sought after and a city not forsaken. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the beginning there was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. The Word was present to God from the beginning. Through the Word, all things came into being, and apart from the Word, nothing came into being that has come into being. In the Word was life, and that life was humanity's light, a light that shines in the darkness, a light that the darkness has never overtaken. Then came one named John, sent as an envoy from God, who came as a witness to testify about the light, so that through his testimony, everyone might believe. He himself was not the light. He only came to testify about the light, the true light that illumines all humankind. The word was coming into the world, was in the world. And though the world was made through the word, the world didn't recognize it. Though the word came to its own realm, the word's own people didn't accept it. Yet, any who did accept the word, who believed in that name, were empowered to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor urge of flesh, nor human will, but born of God. And the word became flesh and stayed for a little while among us. We saw the word's glory, the favor and position a parent gives an only child, filled with grace, filled with truth. John testified by proclaiming, this is the one I was talking about when I said, the one who comes after me ranks ahead of me, for this one existed before I did. Of this one's fullness, we've all had a share, gift on top of gift. For while the law was given through Moses, the gift and the truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. 
It is the only begotten, ever at Abba's side, who has revealed God to us. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be aligned with your love, O God, our strength, our courage, and our freedom. Amen. It is so very good to see all of you or imagine that you were there in my heart on this beautiful Christmas morning. And I'm thrilled that this gospel is one of the readings that we can choose to read on Christmas morning. For this prologue to the Gospel of John, <clears throat> the first chapter of John's Gospel, is one that is so dear to my heart and it is so central in my understanding Christianity. It starts the way the book of Genesis starts in the beginning. For scholars tell us that the writer of this gospel, the, com the composer of this gospel, wanted to say that this was the beginning of real life. In the beginning was the word. Now, a word about the word. That is a translation of the Greek word logos, which is a kind of a Hellenistic understanding that is really the recipe for how the world works. So in the beginning was the recipe. In the beginning was the formula. And that formula or logos word was with God. And it was God. And nothing that was ever made was ever made without going through or being stamped or having the fingerprint of this formula in it. Which is to say that no human being or nothing in the more than human creation, leaves, lizards, moss, rocks, eagles, mountains, nothing that was ever made doesn't have this fingerprint of the formula. But it's more than a fingerprint, it's something that's alive. It's a living formula. Many people think that it would be just as easy to say the Christ, because the Christ understood properly is the formula for being. And then this chapter goes on to say it is the life and it is the light that is in every human being. Every human being and every creation is filled with the luminosity of the divine, to quote Teilhard de Chardin. That means that whenever you see another person, whenever you think about your true self, whenever you go for a walk in nature, that what you are encountering is active divinity, luminous active divinity. And no matter how bleak life can get, it cannot overcome the light. That is the nature of divine light. It is eternal, it is redemptive, it is resurrective, it is new, and it has the capacity to renew you and everything there is over and over and over again. That's the nature of love. That's the nature of grace. That no matter what you've done, no matter what your past, no matter how many mistakes and failures, the divine light is still inside you. Many people who are reworking some of our Christianity so that we can return to the ancient story but understood in a new way, want to make sure that 
we are defining Christianity in alignment with our new cosmology, which is to say that the Big Bang, which started all of it so many billion years ago, that this Christ, this love power, this formula was at the beginning. Now, it is Christmas. Christmas is so much about gift giving. And at this point in the Christmas journey on Christmas morning, most of the Christmas gifts have been unwrapped. And uh, where their children, the children have been involved in playing with the toys already. I simply want to pause and say, of all the gifts that any of us can unwrap during Christmas tide, the greatest gift of all is the fact that this life light, this divine luminous formula for life is in absolutely every one. We say in our baptismal covenant, will you seek and serve Christ in all persons that comes from and is resonant with this first chapter of John's gospel. In other words, the greatest gift you can ever have for Christmas is the gift of the person next to you. The gift of the person in your family. The gift of someone you will encounter during these 12 days of Christmas. It's like unwrapping the greatest gift of all is to discover the Christ, the luminous divine formula, the inner divine genius, and absolutely everyone, finally. After describing all of this, John 1 then says, and this word, this logos, became flesh and dwelt among us. The verb dwelt among us literally means pitched his tent with us. Whenever we lose our way, whenever we forget that the divine and luminous reality is inside of each of us, all we need to do is look at Jesus. There is someone who knew about the divine like life being inside himself and how he lived it out. He was the one who taught us forgiveness. He was the one who taught us how to love. He was the one who taught us how to pray. He's the one who taught us about compassion. He's the one who told us that God desires mercy more than sacrifice. So my friends, on this Christmas morn, I invite you and remind myself to think that we are living with the great Christmas gifts given to us by God, the presence of the Christ, of grace, of love, of mercy inside everyone in our family, everyone we will see. Merry Christmas. Happy gift giving and gift discovering. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, 
the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People in trust and love, bringing our lives before God, let us pray. God of peace, we pray for St. Luke's and the church throughout the world, that we may be salt of the earth and light to the world. We pray for our country, our city, and for all people throughout the world. Lead us into ways of justice and peace that we may respect one another in freedom and truth. Awaken us a sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it. Teach us to care creatively for its resources. God of hope, comfort and restore all who suffer in body, mind and spirit. May they know the power of your healing love. We pray for the hungry, homeless, sick, suffering, lonely, dying, and all those in any need or trouble. Make us willing agents of your compassion. Strengthen us as we share in making your people whole. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. O oh God, you make us glad by the yearly festival of the birth of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we, who joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you, and also with you. Merry Christmas and welcome. We are thrilled that you are with us. If you're visiting with us and we do not have a record of your name and address, we would appreciate your filling out the visitor's card today. We would like to be in touch with you, be in community with you, to let you know all of the really wonderful things that inspire us that are ministries of St. Luke's Episcopal Church in downtown Atlanta. So please uh, either click on the link that you have on Facebook or uh, on our website and fill out the visitor's card. We want to know you. And the link is nearby also on YouTube. There's also a link to our announcements where you can find information on upcoming events and services. Please take some time to review them. We would really love to have your participation in everything. Our church offices will be closed Monday and Tuesday so the staff can celebrate Christmas. As we continue to navigate this pandemic and its crisis, I'd like to remind you that if you need assistance, please let us know. Uh, we have a benevolence fund for any parishioner who needs financial assistance as well as other ways to be of service in this unusual time. Of course, we're not gathered in the church building each week. Nevertheless, we still are hard at work being Christ's presence in the world, 
please understand how we depend on your special giving during Christmas tide. We are now at the end of the fiscal year. We budget for end of year generous gifts. So please put St. Luke's at the top of your end of the year giving for tax deduction purposes. Let us benefit from your generosity so that we can put all of that generosity and giving to work in the mission of being God's presence on Peachtree Street in downtown Atlanta. So please, please, please give. Now let us prepare our hearts and this table for the consecration of bread and wine. Please place on this table anything that you would like healed, transformed, and consecrated. Be it a physical impairment or ailment or relational difficulty or crises going on in the world and our country. And certainly keep the city of Atlanta and the state of Georgia in your prayers as we come closer to a very important runoff here in our city. And then um, as we are consecrating this bread and wine, uh, remembering and feeling the energy with which Jesus was the guidance, the welcomer, and the energy behind his open table fellowships. If you would like to have something to eat or drink at the appropriate time, please do so. However you participate, please do participate in spirit. And uh, please know of our Christmas greetings to you from St. Luke's. Welcome. Let us walk in love as Christ loves us. God be with you, and also with you. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you've made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. For in these last days, you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In Christ, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ's death. We proclaim Christ's resurrection. We await Christ's coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons, your children, through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, alleluia.
these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Son of Mary, Son of God, may we, for whom the heavens have opened, never lose that heavenly vision. May we, who, like the shepherds, have seen in your birth a new kind of love, witness to that love in our lives. Welcome, welcome, Jesus Christ, our infant Savior, baby who makes every birth holy. May we, who, like the shepherds, have witnessed in the stable a new kind of love, return to our work with joy. May we, for whom the heavens have opened to proclaim that God is with us, we who have fed on living bread and drunk the wine of heaven, go out to be instruments of your peace day by day. Father of all, the child born for us is the Savior of the world, May he who made us your children welcome us into your kingdom, where he is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God have sent his Son to take our nature upon him. Bless you in this holy season. Scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the shepherd's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. May God, who in the word made flesh, joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.